everybody and welcome to um, the broadcast. I'm really, really excited about what we're going to be talking about tonight. Last night we dealt with leadership and it was uh, really, really good. It was amazing to understand about the servant leader. Um, so welcome to Kingdom Leadership Unleashed. I wanted to start off yesterday with the servant leader so that we can all understand our place in leadership. For those of you that don't know me or maybe seeing the, the video and um, haven't met me, I'm Dr. Coilette James, and I will be your facilitator for the broadcast tonight. And I'm really excited about it because tonight we're going to be talking about aligning your business with God's vision, which is really, really important. I have been dealing in the entrepreneurship um, sphere of teaching about entrepreneurship and business, et cetera, since 2005. So I've been in this sphere for a while and God has just really taken it to different levels as we have progressed on. When I first got into um, this, this place of assignment from the Lord, it was originally to bring balance because my, what I had observed was that Christians, quote unquote, were either on one end of a spectrum or the other. They either felt that God had no business in their business at all. Um, they thought that, you know, it was, it was akin to separation of church and state, which is crazy too, but we'll talk about that briefly later. But um, either that, they kept them completely out of the business, or they would sit there and they just thought that God should just shower down on them everything that they needed for the business and they didn't have to do anything. And that was also incorrect. So I got into this sphere to teach balance and to, to help people understand that it takes God super on your natural if you're going to achieve supernatural success. It's really, really important that the two come together. And to understand that if you are called to entrepreneurship, it is just that, it is a call. And we have to understand that if we are serving in the kingdom of God, everything we do is God's business everything, you know, from how we operate and run our homes, how we work on our jobs, how we create businesses, all of that goes in line with being God's business. And one of the things that um, Christ said when he was just 12 years old, didn't you know that I would be about my father's business? All right. So that business scans the, the gamut. It's It goes from like I said, in your home, it goes to your place of business, it goes to your leadership skills, no matter where you are, because we are called to be examples. So again, I started off to bring balance, but then God took me through kind of a metamorphosis and he taught me along the way, the difference in just having a quote unquote Christian business and being kingdom minded. And so that took the teaching to a whole nother level, all right? Because a lot of us, we, <laughs> we fill out the paperwork when we're filling out applications or whatever, and we check off the box Christian, and we think that that's it. You know, we are a Christian. But what we fail to understand is that the gospel of the kingdom is the gospel that Christ preached and that we occupy two different spheres at the same time. We operate in this earth realm because there is a, a business and a, a purpose that God has called us to in this earth realm, but we also operate in the kingdom of God. And then we need to step it up even further and recognize and understand that we are part of God's ecclesia. So that means we're part of his governmental body. It's not just, you know, when you can go to church and go to Bible study and sit around, you know, and talk about God. And, and so that makes you a Christian. You know, it's, it's so much different than that. It's understanding that God has complete rule over our lives. All right. And so that means in his business as well. So what we're going to talk about tonight is aligning our business with God's will. All right, so that we can get a clear understanding of who we are based on whose we are and how we need to operate in that sphere. So I'm going to share a PowerPoint and we're going to walk through it tonight. 
but I just wanted to kind of lay a ground, uh, the ground foundation for this. I gave the whole spiel about who I was and introductions and all of that last night. So and uh, all of you that have registered, you got a copy of last night, so I don't have to go into all of that. But the key is, is to understand that this is a passion of mine. It's not something that I do idly. Like I said, I've been doing it since 2005 and I continually allow God to elevate me in it. And when you walk in him with him in obedience to him, he will take you into places that you could not even imagine. And that includes your business, that includes your mindset, that includes your leadership abilities in any place that he is placing you. So we need to just keep that in mind as we walk through what we're going to do tonight. We're going to couple um, scripture along with kingdom principles so that we can learn how to apply that to our day-to-day -day life, which is so very, very important. So with that being said, I am going to go ahead and pull up the PowerPoint. Let me first say do share because that would help so that you guys can see it. And then we can begin to walk through it. All right, so here we are. So again, welcome to Kingdom, Leader, Kingdom Leadership Unleashed, and we're going to be dealing with building influence and impact in business. We've got tonight and one more night to go, but tonight's focus is aligning your business with God's vision. And that's so important because it's not just about you and your vision. We, we can imagine things, but what we cannot do is imagine God. Okay, because his vision, his um, imagination is so much greater than anything we could even fathom. So we have to learn how to align ourselves with his vision. So like I said, I am your facilitator for tonight. And in talking about and dealing with aligning ourselves with God's vision, hold on, let me go back. I'm sorry. Click the button one time too many. I'm trying to get this out of my way here. There we go. Okay, so aligning your business with God's vision is the key to unlocking the full potential of what he has called you to create. In the kingdom, success is measured not just by profits or recognition, but by purpose and impact. When we understand that our businesses are not just ventures, but divine assignments, it changes everything. So tonight we will explore how to discern God's vision for your business and align your strategies, decisions, and growth with his divine will. The result? supernatural success that transcends what the world defines as achievement and positions your business to transform lives, communities, and even nations. It is an amazing thing when we align ourselves with what God has for us and we watch the fruit of it unfold. It is incredible. So we're going to begin with understanding God's vision for your business. It's an amazing thing when we understand how we were as little children and we could envision anything. I mean, there was nothing that we couldn't envision that we could do. We could fly, we could go to the moon, we could do everything. But somewhere along the line, somebody may have stepped on your dreams or they may have stepped on your imagination. And as we grow older, our imagination begins to dim. But what we have to understand is God's vision never dims. His imagination never ends. He told us not to have vain imagination, which is imagination just based on ourselves when you talk about vanity. But when you allow him to breathe on your imagination, that expands your vision. And then that's when you understand that you have limitless potential. So before aligning your business with God's vision, it is essential to understand what that vision is. God has a unique purpose for every Every business, just as he has for every individual. This requires seeking him intentionally for guidance and insight. Proverbs 29 and 18 tells us that 
where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. This verse highlights the importance of having clear direction from God. Without a vision, a business lacks the purpose and guidance necessary for long-term success. So there are four steps to help you to understand God's vision for your business. With scriptures to support each of them, we're going to look at them. Number one is vital. This is in life. This is in business. This is in relationship. This is in every single thing you do. Seek God in prayer. Start your day off with him, in your day with him. Philippians 4 and 6 says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Make prayer your foundation. And as you pray, ask God to reveal the purpose behind your business. Continually seek his wisdom for every decision. And we talked last night a little bit about the fact that prayer should start with you being silent. We want to rush in when we're praying and give God our laundry list that we need him to take care of and keep it moving. We then hit it and quit it and kept going. We've never taken the time to stop and get God's counsel on what it is that we're asking or to get his counsel about what he wants us to release in this atmosphere. Remember, he created us as creative beings just like him. So we're created in his image and in his likeness, and he has given us the ability to speak those things that be not as though they were. Why do they come to pass? Because we speak his words. Remember Christ said, I only do what I see my father do. I only say what I hear my father say. So if you start your prayer in silence and listening for like, God, what is it that you want me to attend to today? Because remember, he already knows what the day holds. He already knows what he's put in motion for you. He already knows what he has assigned to you for that day. So it's important that when we see God in prayer, it's not always about running our miles, but it's about listening intently to what God has to say. Study his word. Psalms 119 and 105 reminds us, your word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. The Bible provides principles for structuring, leading, and growing your business in alignment with kingdom values. God's word serves as a guide to ensure your business remains on the path of his vision. Listen, there is nothing that you can encounter in business that you cannot find in the word to help you and direct you through it. It's all in his word. His word is literally a blueprint for your life and the business plan for your business. You just have to allow him to lead God and direct you to the places he needs you to attend to in his word. Be sensitive to his voice. Like I just said, you need to be listening for him. We worry in the world about our competitor and we want to always have the edge over our competition. If you are sensitive to the voice of God, trust me, you will always have the edge over your competitor. But your competitor is not within the kingdom. Your competitor is within the world because in the kingdom, we don't count, we don't compete with one another, we collaborate with one another. So it makes a world of difference. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. Be sensitive to God's voice is, I'm sorry, being sensitive to God's voice is crucial. He can speak to you through prayer, circumstances, others, or an inner conviction. As you stay connected to him, you'll recognize when he's directing you toward his vision for your business. God can speak to you through so many different entities. You know, we we think that we only hear his voice if a prophet speaks to us. We have the prophetic operating within us every single day of our lives because we have the Holy Spirit. God lives within us. So what we have to do is be sensitive to his leading and listen to his voice. Trust his timing. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to be a little transparent here. That's one of my, my biggies, okay, that I struggle with from time to time. Trusting his 
timing. I want everything yesterday. Those of you on here that know me and you know how I drive, you know, I already wanted to be where I was going before I left home. Okay. And I'm like that in business and other things as well. I just, I want it. I want it done already, but I've had to learn over the years to trust his timing. Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 says, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. God's vision often unfolds in stages. Trust his timing, even when it seems delayed. He may reveal one part at a time, teaching you to trust him through each phase of growth. In Hosea, I believe a 6 and 3, it says that as you go, then shall you know. He's not going to tell you everything up front. So don't expect it. All right. That's where faith comes in. And that's why without faith, it's impossible to please him because you got to believe him. That's where faith is. So your faith walk is definitely going to be on steroids if you're trusting God in your business. Trust me on that. The next thing we're going to talk about is surrendering your plans to God's vision. So we, we did a, a business retreat not too long ago. It was the beginning of August. And one of the things that we did first, the first day of the retreat was just getting before God, staying before God in prayer for him to talk to us about the vision that we had for the business that we wanted to create. That was number one. You've got to surrender what you think you should be doing to him. It does not say that your thought is wrong, but you want to clarify and quantify that you're on the right path. That it's not just you, but it's him leading, guiding, and directing you. So once we understand God's vision for our business, the next critical or crucial step is surrendering our own plans and ambitions to his divine will. This requires humility, trust, and a willingness to let go of our limited perspectives in favor of God's broader kingdom focused vision. Like I said, you can't outthink God. You can't out imagine God. So it's really, really important that you surrender your plans to him and let him breathe on it. All right. Proverbs 16 and 9 reminds us that in their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. I'm sure you've all heard, you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans, <laughs> okay? Because nine times out of 10, it's not going to allow a line with his plans. You may have many plans and ideas, but true success comes when we allow God to guide us. Surrendering does not mean abandoning your efforts, but aligning them with his purpose. It's about inviting God into every decision and trusting that his ways are higher and better. And I promise you they are. So number one, let's acknowledge God as the ultimate CEO. All right. Let's acknowledge that he knows much more than you know. I don't care how much education you have. I don't care how much on the job training you have. I don't care what you've walked through. Trust me. He knows more than you know. Colossians 1 and 16 says, for in him, all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. Recognize that your business exists because of God's plan. As the creator of all things, he has the right to direct everything every aspect of your business. Acknowledge him as the ultimate CEO and submit to his leadership. Whew, here's another biggie that I kind of stroll and, and struggle with, and that's let go of control. I think we all like to be in control. We like to know that we got a handle on what we want, when we want it, and we think that we know best how to do it. But let go of control. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 states, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Trusting God often means letting go of our desire to control every outcome. Surrendering allows us to trust that his plans are better than what we could imagine. Let me tell you something. If you are experiencing burnout, then that means that you have not let go of control. 
because he is very, very clear on he will not put more on you than you can bear, that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. If you are burned out, then you're not trusting him. You're still trying to control everything. You're not allowing him to take the lead. It's like that, again, the old saying, Jesus, take the wheel, please take the wheel, the brakes, the gas pedal, you take it all, okay? Let me just ride. I just want to ride, all right? Seriously. And you, I mean, it's, an, it's a, a place that it takes time for us to get to. If we want to be honest about it, it's not an overnight transition because you, well, okay, so let me put it on me again, all right? I grew up fiercely independent, still am. Still am. Saturday, I'll be 68 years old. Trust me, I'm fiercely independent. But I had to learn to be interdependent in him. I had to learn that, you know what? I may have a handle on some things, but I don't have a handle on all things. So Lord, I've got to trust you and let you be in control. So we continue with one more um point on surrendering, or a couple more points, actually surrendering your plans to God's vision. Align your daily decisions with his vision. Psalms 37 and 5 encourages us to commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will do this. He will do everything that is needed to be done. Again, he knows what the day holds. He knows what you need probably before you need it. In fact, he said he already knew before you spoke it, before you opened your mouth to utter it, he knew. So every decision you make from business partnerships to expansion strategies should be filtered through prayer and an understanding of God's vision. When we commit each step to him, we can trust that he will guide us to success. Let me throw this in here really quick. When we think of the scripture to be ye not unequally yoked, most people take it straight to marriage. I promise you, you do not want to be unequally yoked to somebody in business. Somebody that has a different mindset than you have, somebody that has different aspirations than you have, somebody that is not walking in kingdom principles, you don't want that. You're going to have a nightmare on your hand. So definitely take and align your daily decisions with God. Walk in faith, not in fear. All right. Second Timothy says one in seven reminds us for the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but it gives us power, love and self-discipline. All right. He said he has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. Some of the things that we do in business indicates that something is wrong upstairs. OK, we're not utilizing and operating in the mind of Christ. Because we're making foolish decisions. We're making emotional decisions. We're making circumstantial decisions. You know, if you look around the world today, just you ain't even got to go to the world. Look around your neighborhood, okay? Look around, especially this country that we're in right now that's in the midst of an upheaval, all right? You've got to have the mind of Christ to operate in that. So you cannot walk in fear. You cannot be timid in what you're doing, but you've got to be mindful to trust. If God says to do it, it's okay. Surrender requires faith. It absolutely does. You've got to trust him. You And with all things, I have really, really bad trust issues. I have had them all of my life. Well, most of my life because they evolve through um, walking through betrayals and, and different things that have occurred in life. And so my trust issues are something that really I hold on to as a defense mechanism. I'm not going to lie, you know, because it keeps me safe. It keeps my heart safe. It keeps me from venturing in too far into situations that I probably shouldn't have been in to begin with. All right. But I had to learn to trust God. That's the only entity in creation that I trust emphatically. Because again, he knows more than I know. You may not always see the full picture, but walking in faith means trusting that God is in control, even when the future is unclear. Fear can hold us back, but faith propels us forward. If God said, do it, do it. I heard Cindy Trim say this probably about three years ago. It was at In Your Year Strong. And she said, if God tell you to jump off that cliff, you jump off that cliff and sprout some wings on your way down. I was like, 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I got it. She's like, don't worry. You gonna fly. You If he said jump, you will learn to fly. Your wings will materialize on the way. You will not hit the ground. I was like, okay, I got it. I got it. So that's how we have to um, be walking in faith, seriously. So now we need to look at aligning our business operations with God's vision. It's really, really important that we're not just operating in our limited vision. And vision is more than eyesight. Vision sees farther and greater uh, places than just what we can see with our natural eye. Just what you see with our, your natural eye can trick you and fool you. But if you allow the vision of God to guide you, you'll see much more clearer and much farther than you thought you could. Once we've, once we've surrendered our plans, the next step is to ensure that our business operations reflect God's vision. This involves aligning the day-to-day -day activities, the values, and the culture of your business with kingdom principles. When God's vision drives your operations, you create a business that not only prospers, but also serves as a beacon of kingdom influence. Now, you know, my one of my companies is called Kingdom Influencer Life. It's because God has called us to be influencers in this earth realm, and we can influence people lives just by acknowledging their existence. That's part of that servant leadership. That's part of being a kingdom-minded operation because you're going to be mindful of key elements that align with God's vision in your operation. And because of that, you will influence not just your employees, but your customers and clients as well. We're going to operate with integrity and excellence. Colossians 3, 23 through 24 says, whatever you do, do it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ that we are serving. That is is very, very important, especially if you are working for someone else, all right? Because the person you're working for may not be operating fully in kingdom principles, but whatever you're doing, you are required to do it with a spirit of excellence. And then that, if you give that out to the person that you're working for, then you will reap that in your business and you will understand that your employees will do the same when you acknowledge them when you understand the importance that they bring to the table. You know, if the person is just there just to get a check, the productivity is low. But when that person feels like they're a part of the greater scheme of things, that productivity will be much higher. So you operate in integrity and excellence. And here that leads us directly into create a kingdom center culture, you know, a culture where people can thrive, not just survive, where people can fulfill their potential, a culture where you can see the potential in others and you help them to cultivate it. Matthew 5 and 16 says that in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven. How do you draw people to the father? In business, it's not about just Bible thumping and every time somebody comes in, you got a scripture for them and what have you. No, your life, your life is a living epistle. If you're living a life that is full of love, compassion, empathy, if you're living a life that you're pouring into other people's lives, I promise you, they will see God in you without you ever saying God. They will know because they'll see something different about you. Establish a culture that mirrors kingdom values such as love, service, generosity, and justice. Your business should be a reflection of Christ, a place where clients, customers, and employees can experience the kingdom through your actions and your decisions. Again, marketplace ministry is not just about standing on the street corner preaching 
It's, it's not. It's about how you treat people, how you value people, especially your employees. Your employees need to know that they're valued because when they don't feel that value, it will cut your productivity. It will cut what they will do on your behalf, how they will watch your back. It, it, you'd be surprised. You will be surprised at what a kingdom center culture can do for your establishment. A couple of other elements um, in allowing or aligning operations with God vision is to ensure ethical and transparent practices. Proverbs 11 and 1 states that the Lord detests dishonest scales, but accurate weights find favor with him. That's how they used to weigh money back in the day is, you know, when you were bartering for goods, they would put your money on a scale or whatever you were borrowing, bartering with. And if the scales were dishonest, they would always tip into the other person's favor. OK, where it didn't look like you were giving them as much as you were. That's a dishonest scale. You want to make sure that you're not utilizing unethical practices in your business. Ethical pr business practices honor God. Transparency in financial dealings, fair wages, and truthfulness in communication are essential to operating a business that aligns with his vision. Avoid any shortcuts or unethical decisions, even if they appear profitable. Trust me, if he called you to this entrepreneurial sphere, he is the one that will give you the profit. You don't have to cheat anybody to try to get it. Trust me. Empower your employees and team members. This goes back to that kingdom culture. Ephesians 4 and 12 reminds us to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. We are called to be kingdom ambassadors, kingdom expanders. So if we are expanding the kingdom, then we've got to be sowing in to our employees and our team members. And here's the other thing. You are not just in this to make money. You're in this to make legacy. Legacy is far greater than money, houses, cars, and all of that. Legacy is how you have imparted into somebody else's life. That's the legacy you live behind. Because I promise you, all that money and stuff, your, your heirs and the government and everybody else going to go through it. They didn't work for it. And they don't care about it. All right. But it's what are you doing? What are you imparting into the lives of those that God has assigned to you? And sometimes our assignments <laughs> are the very ones that rub us the wrong way. It's the very ones that we're like, oh, I can't stand this person. I promise you, I've had it happen multiple times where I'm at work, I'm in my office, and you know when people like you and when they don't like you, you can feel it. But the very ones that you know don't like you for whatever reason, maybe just because you're breathing, those are the ones that will come in, flop down, and want to have conversations. And you're like, first of all, I'm working. Like, second of all, in your mind, you're going, what do you want? All right. But you still got to treat them with kindness. You still have to treat them the way God would want you to treat them, the way God treats you. All right. That's the thing that keeps me humble. It's like, Lord, I, I've been forgiven much, <laughs> much. So therefore, I understand your grace and your mercy. And if you could do it for me, then I understand that you can do it for others. God's vision for your business often includes empowering others. Create opportunities for your employees to grow, not just professionally, but personally and spiritually. A kingdom-driven business fosters an environment where people are encouraged to use their gifts and talents for a greater purpose. I don't know about you, but I have worked with people that because they were concerned about my light shining a little bit brighter than them or my being able to take care of something better than them, they tried to like keep their foot on my neck. Okay. Have you experienced that? It's like, no, that is not what God has called us to do. Trust me. Can't nobody outshine you and what God has called you to do. There's only one you. All right. He's equipped you uniquely to be exactly who you are. Can't nobody else shine you. So you don't have to worry about that. All right. You're there to shine his light. So they can't outshine him. Therefore, they can't outshine you. 
Prioritize kingdom impact over profit. Matthew 6 and 33 declares, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you as well. While profit is important, it should never take precedence over kingdom impact. Ask yourself, how is my business making a difference in people's lives? How am I contributing king to kingdom expansion? When we prioritize God's vision, profit follows. It's a byproduct of operating in his will. Remember Matthew 6, he said, you know, the world is concerned about what they're going to eat, what they're going to put on, where they're going to live. But you don't have to concern yourselves of those things. All you got to do is seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So you don't have to worry about just going after the money. The money will come after you if you are walking in the will of God. I promise you, you don't have to worry about that. So the next thing we're going to talk about here is trusting God's provision and timing. So therefore, if you're trusting his provision, then you know you don't have to be unethical in your dealings because he's going to provide and his timing is impeccable. It will drive you to the brink of craziness sometimes because it's like, Lord, when are you going to show up? But he's never late. Remember, he's not on time. He is time. So he can bend time to do whatever he wants it to do. And when we keep that in our mind, then we understand, Lord, you got it. I don't even have to worry about it. As you align your business with God's vision, it is crucial to trust in his provision and timing. God's vision for your business may involve seasons of growth, waiting, and even unexpected turns. But through it all, his provision will sustain you and his timing will bring about success in ways human efforts alone can not. All right, you gotta trust him. And, and the twists and turns of your life, stop having regrets and if I coulda, woulda, shoulda, because guess what? They're all part of your story. He engrafts them in. They're all part of your story. You have not missed anything, you know, because you may have taken a wrong turn. Well, you might have had to encounter some things that you wouldn't have encountered if you hadn't taken that wrong turn. But whatever God has for you is for you. He's got you. Don't worry. He'll just incorporate it into your story. So here's some key points on trusting God's provision and timing. God will provide the resources that you need. Philippians 4 and 19 reminds us, and my God, my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. When you align your business with God's vision, trust, he will provide the necessary resources, whether financial, human, or material. Sometimes provisions may come from unexpected places, but God always equips us with what is needed for the assignment he has given you. It's his assignment. So as long as it's his assignment that you're carrying out, he is going to provide for it. But guess what? He is not obligated to provide for your mess. So that's why it's so important that you are going to pay attention to him. Don't just get messy just to be messy. He's not obligated to that, but anything that he's assigned you to, he has an obligation to. Avoid rushing ahead of God's timing. Habakkuk 2 and 3 says, for the revelation awaits for an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it lingers, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. God's timing is perfect, even when it doesn't align with our own expectations. Avoid rushing ahead, making hasty decisions, or forcing outcomes that God has not yet ordained. Patience and faith are required to wait for his timing to reveal the fullness of his plans. I don't know about y'all, but I've tried to help God a few times too many. Okay. And it never ended up well. It just didn't. So I've stopped trying to help him out and I've learned to just say, okay, <laughs> I'm just going to wait on you, Lord. Cause Hey, that brick wall hurts and I've done hit my head enough times on it. 
Here's some other key points to God's provision and timing. Um, stay faithful in the waiting season. Don't weary. Don't weary in it. I know it's it, it gets long sometimes. And sometimes you've been waiting for years for something to manifest. But Galatians 6 and 9 encourages us to let's not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. It's not just the proper time. It is the appointed time. It's God's appointed appointed time. He knows the appointed time that he has put in place for you. For I know the plans I have for you. That's God. We don't know all of the plans he has for us. And we do weary in the long waits, but just don't give up trust him. And he has a gentle way. He's so beautiful like this of coming and giving you encouragement just when you're at that last straw place, just when you feel like, Lord, I don't even want to wake up in the morning. I just can't keep doing this. And he will gently give you that spirit of peace that surpasses all understanding so that you can keep going. Trust him in that. Trust him in that. Seasons of waiting are inevitable. But there are also times of preparation. Sometimes we're not ready for what it is that we want God to do. And we don't understand that. It's like a three-year-old. You don't want to give that three-year-old the keys to the car. That three-year-old may sit in the back seat in its little um, car seat and pretend it's driving with the steering wheel, but you don't want it behind the real steering wheel, okay? Because it's not mature enough to handle it. There are times we are not mature enough to handle what God has for us. Just be patient. He's me. Trust me. Stay faithful in small things and maintain a posture of expectancy. Trust that the seeds you sow today will bear fruit in God's timing. Trust me, they will. They will. They will. Embrace God's super on your natural. That's what I was talking about at the very beginning to, to achieve supernatural success. I have a, a television show that I've been doing. Ooh, God for probably about three years now called Supernatural Success. And it's really, really about God super on your natural because that's where your success lies. Your success does not lie in the same place that success is in the world. It's in the supernatural. It's in God. Ephesians 3 and 20 reminds us now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. Your efforts are important, but when God is involved, he adds his super to your natural. Trust in his supernatural power to expand, multiply, and elevate your business far beyond what human efforts alone can achieve. You can't outdo God, I promise. You can't outdo God. But you stay in that place of expectancy. Expect miraculous breakthroughs. You will have breakthroughs when you least expect it, and they will come from the most bizarre places. And it's like, dang, I really didn't see that coming. But that's God. That's like I said, that gentle kiss he'll give you just to know, okay, <laughs> it's going to be all right. So you expect the miraculous. Isaiah 40 and 31 says, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. When you align with God's vision, expect breakthroughs that defy logic miraculous provision, divine connections, unexpected opportunities will arise as you trust in his plan. Keep your faith, keep your hope anchored in his promises. Really, really important. So how do we measure success by kingdom standards? Well, I can definitely guarantee you it's not the same way they measure success in the world. As kingdom entrepreneurs, it is vital to redefine success according to God's standards, not the world's. While the world measures success through profits, growth charts, and accolades, God's measure of success is rooted in obedience, impact, and the advancement of his kingdom. Aligning your business with God's vision means shifting your perspective on what true success looks like. So here's some key points in measuring success by kingdom standards. Obedience over outcomes. 
obedience over outcomes. First Samuel 15 and 22 reminds us, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice and to heed is better than the fat of rams. Success in God's eyes is first and foremost about obedience. You may not always see immediate results, but if you are walking in obedience to God's direction for your business, that is true success. Trust that he is working behind the scenes even when outcomes are delayed or look different from your expectation. Impact over profit, people, is so important. Don't go after the dollars, go after the impact. Go after God. Matthew 25 and 21 says, his master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Kingdom success is not solely about profit. It is about impact. Are you making a difference in the lives of your employees, customers, and community? Have you been faithful with what God has given you? Measure your success by the eternal impact of your business has on others and how well you have stewarded the resources God has entrusted to you. I promise Success is not a Bentley, although I want one. <laughs> success is not the money, the cars, and all of the things that the world says it makes you a success. It is have you been impactful with what God has given you in the lives of others? God is in the people business. He is in the people business, all right? So he is looking to see what are you doing with his people. That's really, really important. Transformation over transactions. Romans 22 and, or 12 and 2 encourages, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then, then will you be able to test and prove what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. In kingdom business, success is not just about making transactions, but about trans transforming lives. We have to get that in our spirit. It's about transforming lives, whether it's through the products you offer, the services you provide, or the relationships you build. Your business should lead to positive change and transformation in the people you serve. Very, very important. Are you making a difference? Are you making a difference? Faithfulness over fame. Luke 16 and 10 says, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. Faithfulness to God's vision matters more than becoming famous or recognized. It's about how you handle what you've been given. God rewards faithfulness. And in his timing, he may choose to expand your influence, but true success is found in being faithful with what you have, even in seasons of small beginnings. And those seasons of small may last for a while, but are you faithful in them? Are you faithful in them? Are you showing up as God would have you to show up? Eternal perspective over temporary gain. Matthew 6, 19 through 21 teaches, do not stare or store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Kingdom success is measured through an eternal lens. Focus on building treasures in heaven through your business by advancing the kingdom of God. Temporary gains like profit, recognition, and market dominance, they're fleeting. But the kingdom impact that you make will last forever. Trust me, people are so fickle. You will be on top today and on the bottom tomorrow. They will step on you. So stop trying to get the recognition of others and be on this, you know, this famous um, pursuit because trust me, it's, it's fleeting. It is fleeting. So we're going to look 
now about walking in God's vision for your business. We've talked about all the different things that is very, very important for you to do within your business. So this is, we're coming to the, the end of it now. You've, you've accomplished what God has called you to. It's important that you walk in it. You walk in what God's vision is. After understanding and aligning your business with God's vision, the final step is to confidently walk in that vision daily. This involves living out the principles of kingdom leadership and trusting God to guide each decision in every phase of your business. Walking in God's vision means living by faith, relying on his wisdom, and continually adjusting your plans to remain in alignment with his purpose. Listen, don't be afraid to have to change gears, all right? Because God is not a stagnant God. He may have told you to go right for five years. And then all of a sudden, one morning, he said, no, I want you to go left today. Don't get caught up in, in the, the comfortable. Don't get caught up in the status quo. Make sure you're aligning yourself with his direction. So key points on walking in God's vision for your business. We walk by faith and not by sight. All right. Like I said before, this limited natural vision you have. It's not going to get you as far as you think. It's not going to get you as far as you think. But if you walk by faith, there is no end to where you can get to. Second Corinthians 5 and 7 declares, for we live by faith. We live by faith, not just walk, but live by faith, not by sight. Walking in God's vision requires faith, and it truly does. You may not always see the full picture, and challenges may arise, but trusting in God's faithfulness will enable you to move forward with confidence. Faith allows you to step into the unknown, knowing that God is already ahead of you, orchestrating every single detail. You got to trust him in that, that he knows tomorrow again, and that he will make sure that everything you need is at your disposal. Depend on daily guidance from the Holy Spirit. John 16 and 13 says, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. As you walk in God's vision, it is essential to rely on the Holy Spirit for daily guidance. Seek his wisdom in every business decision, whether big or small. The Holy Spirit will guide you in truth, helping you navigate challenges, seize opportunities, and stay in alignment with God's will. That's why it is so important that you wake up every morning in his presence and get his directive for today. Remain flexible and adapt to God's adjustment or adapt to God's adjustment. Again, out of the clear blue, he'll switch it up for you, but that's because he already knows what's coming. So if he tells you to go a different way, you go a different way. Don't argue. James 4, 13 through 15 warns. Now listen, you who say today or tomorrow, we will go to this or that city, spend a year there, carry on business and make money. Why do you, why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow? Instead, you ought to say, if it's the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. God may adjust your plans along the way. Walking in his vision requires flexibility. Be willing to pivot when he, when he opens or closes doors. Trust that his adjustments are for your good and that he is guiding you toward greater success and impact. I'm going to tell you something truthfully. Some of the doors that he has closed on my behalf is more important than the doors that he opened because those were doors of destruction. Some of the greatest lessons that I've learned in life was what not to do again, because it could have literally taken my life. So that's, you know, we 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 become very um, intuitive and smart. And when we're out there before we gave our life to the Lord and we were out in the streets, we were very mindful of everything around us because we had to be. 
you know, especially if you were living that unsavory life, you had to make sure that you were paying attention to everything. To this day, I can't go in a restaurant and sit with my back to a door. I promise you, it's sad. And I've been saved 36 years, but I still can't do it. It's like, I need to see, I need to know what's coming. I need to know who's coming. Why is it that we get saved and we get stupid? <laughs> Like all of a sudden we are no longer mindful of what's going on around us. We no longer can just cut, you know, switch it up on a dime. Why? I don't get that. You know, you better learn to be flexible and be yielded to however God is leading and directing you. Because again, it could literally save your life. Stay rooted in prayer in God's word. Joshua 1 and 8 advises, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then, then, it's a time word, then you will be prosperous and successful. Prayer and God's word are your compass in business. As you walk in his vision, remain rooted in prayer and scripture. They will keep you grounded, strengthen your faith, and give you the clarity needed to overcome obstacles and fulfill your calling. Very important. This is also very important. Celebrate small and big wins along the journey. You know, we want to celebrate the big things. We want to celebrate, you know, when the fireworks are going off and oh my God, do you see what God did? Celebrate the small things too, because it's the small wins that get you to the big wins. It's the small decisions that get you to the big decisions. So it's important to give God glory in the small things. First Thessalonians 5 and 18 says, give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. As you walk in God's vision, take time to celebrate both the small and big victories. Gratitude and celebration keep your heart aligned with God's goodness and remind you that he is at work in every detail. Recognize that each milestone is a part of the journey toward fulfilling his greater purpose for your business. And the last point we have, if I click it twice, here we go. The last point that we have is to lead with confidence and humility. Philippians 2 and 3 teaches do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. That's that servant leader leadership, okay? Walking in God's vision requires a balance of confidence and humility. Be confident in the vision God has given you but remain humble. Know that it is his power at work through you. Lead your team and your business with a servant's heart. Always, 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 always giving God the glory. So I, I put this together at the direction of God because I really, really, as I said in the beginning, I want people and to help people understand how important it is to have that kingdom mindset as you are developing your business. You may be at the very beginning of cultivating what it is that God has placed in your heart to do, and you may need some help with it. Well, I did something um, probably about a month and a half ago that was really, really cool to me. And I created what is called the Faith Biz Blueprint GPT. Most of you are um, mindful and you know about ChatGPT. It's like the leading AI in the sphere of AI right now. Well, this operates just like ChatGPT. In fact, it, it's on the same platform, the open AI platform. Only the Faith Biz Blueprint GPT will help you develop your business with kingdom principles. You, when you, whatever you're searching, it'll help you do your business plan. It'll help you do your marketing plan. It'll help you scale your business if you're already in business. It'll help you with financial projections, all of those wonderful things that you need to operate your business, but it will do it all from a kingdom perspective and it will make sure that everything it gives you, it will tie in kingdom principles with it. It's free. I'm not trying to sell anything. All right, what happened? 
Okay, it's free. I'm not trying to sell anything here. It's um, it's at your disposal. This top QR code, if you want to scan it, you can, um, and it will take you to the GPT, but it's something to help you in your business so that you can make sure you're incorporating kingdom principles in whatever you do. And I promise you, I have uh, one of the attendees here on the line with us tonight that attended the um, the spiritual business retreat up in the Smoky Mountains. And she will testify and verify that we literally took concept, concept in people's mind, hadn't even written it down yet, took it from concept to launch where they were doing pitches, their elevator pitch, proposal pitches, and everything within five days, literally. And it's because AI is a tool in our hands, all right? It's not something that we need to fear. It's not the devil. It's a tool. So it can be used for the good or for the bad. And I choose to use it for the good, all right? And it will transform what it is that you're trying to do. I built um, a website around it to help you navigate through it and different things. It's Faith Biz um, Blueprint website, and that's the QR code for it right there, the second one. So if you want to go on there and check it out, you can. And then for those of you that are old school and you prefer a workbook, something to write and work in, well, I created a workbook for it too. It's almost 300 pages, so it's intense. It, it was intense creating it, trust me. Um, that is for sale. That's on Amazon. It's $30 just to get the, the hard copy but if you have Kindle, it's only $9.99. So if you need help in um, developing your business, upscaling your business, whatever it is, those things are available to you to help you. Because again, this is one of the missions and the passions in life that God has given me. So just as I did yesterday, and I'll do it again tomorrow, I will send you guys um, a PDF that will be an overview of everything that we've covered tonight. And in the PDF on the last page, you will also have those QR codes in case you didn't get a chance to um, screenshot them now. They will be in there. Um, and there will also be a link to this recording. So if you want to go back and listen to it, you can. And I'll make sure I'll include last night's recording in it as well, because I know some of you um, just registered today. So you didn't get the recording last night because I didn't have your email address. Um, but you're you're welcome to do that. So at this point now, I'm open for Q&A, comments, anything that um, you would like to ask or share. Um, be my guest. I well, go ahead, Chanel. I actually got so many nuggets. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I uh, just wanted to go back, um, just some notes that I that I wrote down and you were talking about being not unequally yoked and how we take that into just relationships, but we really haven't thought about that in a business relationship. So I thought that that was so key because we know that the enemy, um, he can transform himself as an angel of light. So yeah. um, so I just I just wrote that down to just to to say, yeah. Yeah, that's just something to keep in mind when we're moving forward. It's important. It is important. We have to be mindful. Even, you know, um, I, this was something that I've always wanted to do. And I believe that God is opening up that door in the very, very near future. But I always wanted to be an angel investor. But I've always been very mindful and leery of some of them that are out there. Because, again, if they don't have the same mindset, they may want to invest in you just to take it from you. You've got yes. to be very, very mindful of who you're yoking yourself up with. It's so mm -hmm. important. It is so important. So, yeah. So, good nugget. Good yeah. nugget. Yes, Dr. Sprinkles. <laughs> well, I just want to, first of all, just say congratulations for continuing to blaze trails untraveled. And um, you are setting a standard that's high enough for us to reach for and attain. And as a byproduct of the mountaintop experience, I can attest that it works when and if you work it. 
And then the reality behind it is even if you don't work it, God is going to work it because he's going to see it to completion. Mm -hmm. So if anyone on here has the opportunity to go through the experience, trust yourself to trust the process. Trust yourself to trust the process. Do not be intimidated by what it's unknown because God already knows it. He already knows what he's put in you. He's already equipped you with what you need and with the tools that she has given to support, it really makes a difference and you will find yourself soaring instead of sitting. So cool. Those bravo, bravo. <laughs> amazing. I'll be back tomorrow oh, wow. and um, treat yourself. You deserve it. You, you, you deserve to, to launch now. Now is your time. If you were looking for a sign, um, this is your sign. Well, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, Beth, Beth was one of those up that we were up at the mountain. Like, like I said, she can testify. I'm not lying. And it was just, it was mind blowing. It was mind blowing what God did, you know? Oh, and so definitely. that's why it is so important that, you know, we're not fearful of things that God gives us as tools, you know, don't fear it because it's unknown. Learn it. <laughs> You know, I think um, um, I think that we are, you know how we talk about discerning the seasons and the times. And I, I know for a fact that this is really the season and the time for the female entrepreneurs. And I was praying one particular night and um, I started praying for female entrepreneurs and in the marketplace. And that next morning, it was Saturday, Saturday night, the Lord placed it in my heart. And then that Sunday morning when I went to church, we had a prayer moment. And this particular lady, she came up to me and she was the first one that came and prayed to me. And she said, could you please pray for um, a project that God had given me? And I was like, and I said to her, I said, you're the one I was praying for last night. And I happened to have lunch with her and so amazed so amazed at what God was doing in her life and what God is beginning to do in her life. So I think we're in the season of the female entrepreneurs, you know, and it's time. It's time. It, yeah. It's, this is, this is the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He, um, he spoke some amazing things up on the mountain, but one thing for sure was that this is the season for his daughters. This is the divine appointed time for his daughters, you know, um, and, and to understand, and this, I, I, I always put this disclaimer out there because um, the feminist movement has done us such a disservice. I understand the necessity of fighting for female rights and et cetera. However, God never called us to be in competition with our kings. He called us to be um, in balance with our kings and to be an enhancement. But that did not mean that he told us to sit down and shut up and have babies. <laughs> okay. That was not, you know what I'm saying? Our purpose, we bring balance to the boardroom. We bring balance to the, the governmental sphere. We bring balance, okay? When we, our voices are necessary and especially in this season, and he is called he he is doing that unveiling. He is doing that unveiling to say, listen, my daughters have power. They deserve a seat at the table of authority. All right. And I am making sure that their voices are heard. Their voices are heard. So um, it's it's a powerful thing to know that we're in our season. And that's why it's so important that we regain our voice, because as as women, so often we've lost our voice, you know, especially those of us that are, are seasoned in life. You know, I'm like, what I'll be 70 in two years. That's that's mind boggling to me. I mean, really, it is. 
but this is like my new season. It's like a new renewed, you know, who'd have thought that I would be so trenched in technology at this season of my life? You know, I'm like, wow. But this is what he's doing now. He's taking his daughters and he's flipping the script. And he's like, no, I'm going to use you. I've always used you. Read my word. I've used you all through the word, but now I am getting ready to magnify the spotlight that is on you. However, you need to know how to conduct yourself as my daughters. All right. So that means you don't go out here and you don't get the big head and you're trying to muscle your way into something. No, don't worry. I got you. I will open the door for you. All you have to do is walk in, but you better represent me correctly. That's the message I get. OK, because he don't play with me because, you know, I got a hard head and I'm crazy. So he don't play with me. Represent me correctly. You know, when you were growing up, you remember it was like, you don't you misrepresent your family name. Don't you go out there acting a fool. You know what I'm saying? And he is he's really, really um, serious about it at this point in time. I am getting I am not getting ready. I am blessing my daughters. But make sure you represent me correctly. And here's the thing, Charnel. This is what I really, really love about it. Is that when you think that you're about being royalty and you think about, you just look at the, the children of the King of England, okay? They, all their lives, they were trained to be royals. They grew up being trained in how to conduct themselves, all right? How to be royals. God has trained us how to be royalty in his kingdom. He has trained us how to be his ecclesia. He has trained us how to be his ambassadors. He has trained us. Some of us have stepped out in rebellion and not walked in the training that he has given us. But he is right now saying, listen, don't blow this. Don't blow this. You know what I've put in you. So allow me to magnify it and pull it out of you. Don't you go up there trying to act a fool. <laughs> okay. Serious. So if we make sure we hearken to his voice and, and conduct ourselves as the, the daughters of the king, and there is a, a, a quantifier on that. Walk in as the daughters of the king. You don't have to walk in with your head bowed down, walk in with your shoulders back, your head held high, and know that when you open your mouth, I will give you the words to say, but you represent me properly. And this is the season that we're in. This is the season that we're in. And we are to enhance our kings, not be in competition with them. You know, I want my king to be in his rightful place because he needs to cover me. It was so funny. I said it this morning in my live, my husband was in the room last night when I first started the broadcast and he heard these little trolls and all the things that they were saying. And all I heard him start would do was start praying. He just started praying. That's what you need. I tell women all the time, baby, if he can't carry you in the spirit, he don't need to carry you across the threshold. You better get somebody that can carry you in the spirit. OK, because that's more important than if he can lift you up <laughs> off the ground. Seriously. And so we need to understand the roles that we possess, you know, the roles that we possess. Now, God has said, I'm giving you back your voice, but use it wisely. Make sure your words hold weight. Make sure your words hold weight. So that's where we're at. And that's an awesome place to be. I was reading something this morning. Anybody else can jump in, but you just um, stirred something. And I was reading uh, Revelation. The Lord had led me to read the first four chapters of Revelation. And what stood out to me was that uh, John, he said this, he said, I heard, he said, I heard behind me a great voice and it sounded like a trumpet. And God spoke to me. He said, it sounded like a trumpet because I wanted to get his attention. And I think that God is blowing the trumpet for us mm -hmm. to get our attention that now is the time for the female entrepreneur. Yeah. 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 It's a greater time than ever before. We can be that Proverbs 31 woman. 
you know, the doors are wide open. And then do you think that we like, we just, this is, this is something else to keep in mind and I'll let you guys go, but um, we just crossed into 5785. All right. On the Jewish calendar, just this past week, we just crossed over into the new year. And when I first thought of 85, my first thought was new dimensions of grace, new dimensions of grace, that eight and that five. And those are my numbers, new dimensions of grace. OK, but I listened to Joshua Giles and he broke down the, the pay, that five. OK, and he said that the the what represents that in the Hebraic um, numbering system or whatever, it looks like a window. It looks like a window. And what I heard God say was, don't miss the window of opportunity looking for the door. Don't despise the small beginnings, because when you get through that window, you will find the door. But don't miss the window. Don't miss the window looking for the door. So we've got to be very, very keen and astute in this hour so that we're hearing what God is saying. That's why we're going to celebrate the, the small victories as well as the big victories, because the small victories will lead us to the big victories. So it's just, it's, it's, yeah, it's a powerful time. It's a powerful time time so to him be the glory to him be the glory well okay gosh it's been an hour and 17 minutes <laughs> i'm gonna let you guys go judy did you have anything that you wanted to add or ask or anything before i sign out no i just want to say thank you that was that was wonderful Absolutely wonderful. And I look forward to hearing the uh, recording. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. All right. Well, you guys be blessed and Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Good night. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>